Petronas Towers are an incredible feat of human innovation and engineering. They're absolutely spectacular in person and are a must-see if you're ever traveling to Malaysia. Here's how they compare to the world's tallest buildings. They rank 8th in height at 4.3 soccer fields or 5 football fields. Here are the heights and names of the other 9. Stop the video if you want to memorize them to sound smart at social events. Okay, maybe not. Each tower has 88 floors, took three years to build, and cost about 1.6 billion US dollars. The base has a retail center that's like a mall on steroids with about 300 stores. Seems like a lot of people go during the daytime to avoid the heat and humidity. Here's a quick look inside. It's Saturday afternoon and this place is absolutely packed with people. One of the great things about it that stuck out to me when I was walking around is that most of the brands in it are global. I've seen the same ones in cities around the world that are kind of like hubs for humanity, like London, Paris, Hong Kong, Toronto, and my home, New York, just to name a few cities, of course. Take a look at what I mean. With only one night in the city, one of the toughest decisions to make is where to eat. I decided on Jalan Alor. Jalan Alor is an open air, pan-Asian street food haven. The city effectively shuts the street of Jalan Alor down to auto traffic for several blocks. Then different vendors set up their stalls and rows and rows of tables on each side of the street. After walking up and down the street for a half an hour, the food choices seem endless. They serve everything from air mata kutsing to Vietnam banh mi bread. Sorry I didn't get to Z. V was the closest I could get. Anyhow, check out this incredible variety of food. Deciding what to eat here was kind of like being a kid in the candy shop, with the candy shop being the size of Mount Everest. I finally decided to get a bunch of different dumplings from here, and then washing it down with some freshly pressed sugarcane juice. It was a ton of fun to watch this guy make them. It tasted absolutely fantastic and seemed like a good idea at the time, but at 1.30 in the morning, I woke up as a sugar hit my system like this. <coughs> Luckily, it only took 45 minutes for my sugar crash to arrive. Given I was only in this city for a whopping 26 hours, I'm certainly not an expert on the people of Kuala Lumpur. Heck, I'm not an expert on anything. But Malaysia is my 39th country, and it's my experience that each place has a general overall energy. Before I give you my take, here are some nerdy facts about KL and some everyday interactions from everyday people. It has a population of just under 8 million people with a city center of around 1.7 million, which is about the same as New York City. There are three main ethnic groups, Malay, Chinese, and Indian, with a handful of others from all over Asia. They practice several religions, and the country is also a democracy. Just like most places around the world, older brothers watch over their younger sisters and give their younger brothers piggybacks. Also, teenagers like to play jokes on each other and find commonality in gestures and in the clothes they wear. Friends and family like to eat together and dads help their young kids eat their food. Grandmothers adore their glued to smartphone grandchildren. People take selfies for Instagram. Couples like to have their pictures taken against great backdrops and go for walks in the park. Some girls apparently really like their boyfriend's arms around them. When it's hot out, parents take their kids to local bodies of water to cool off or to the air conditioned mall for a little shopping and maybe a little ice cream Parents also pick their kids up when their little legs are too tired to walk. So my take on the people of this densely populated cosmopolitan Asian melting pot is they're friendly, family-oriented, really seem to embrace diversity and give meaning to bumper stickers like this.